So welcome. Uh, this webinar here is all about uh, the first visit. And really, this is a system within the Infotail world uh, called the first visit system. And it employs a handful of tools. And ultimately, uh, our outcome, we look to uh, automate at the end of the day. So <clears throat> pardon me. So uh, we're going to discuss the first visit system, and uh, we're going to dig right in. The inspiration for this comes from a number of different places, but most importantly, it comes from my study of uh, Disney World and Walt Disney and, and uh, Disney Company as a whole. Uh, I heard this quote uh, from one of their speakers uh, earlier this year and felt it's very worthy to share. Uh, so Disney's consistent business results are driven by over-managing certain things that most companies undermanage or ignore. Ultimately, that's the key source of what differentiates Disney, us, uh, and they have learned to be intentional where others are unintentional. And to me, that's very important. Uh, so many business owners that I talk to uh, ultimately allow the most important thing, the selling in their business to be led astray by maybe themselves, how they feel that day, what's going on uh, in their world, um, mostly to be led astray by the sales staff and the team members that they have working for them. So things like sales greetings are left unintentional. Everybody has their own greeting. Uh, everybody has their own way to present a product, you know, or service. Uh, everybody maybe dresses a different way. Certainly none of those things are intentional. They're very unintentional. Um, and it's not what's going to differentiate you versus your competition and ultimately what your customer experiences when they're in front of you. So before I go too much further, I want to kind of give you a brief history of how this system was created. Uh, so in 2011, my business partner and I purchased Gardner's Bedrooms. Sales in that year uh, had actually declined the year previous, that is, they declined from a high of $1.5 million a year in revenue to 1.1. Uh, we moved the business. Uh, the previous owner uh, was looking to retire. He had uh, subsequently lost the lease about at the beginning of 2010 and was in a month-to-month -month scenario. Uh, ben and I saw a lot of opportunity in the business, and we reinvented it as Gardner's Mattress and More. Uh, so this is our business, uh, our storefront. Uh, we come to you very much from a place of face-to-face -face selling. So whether you actually have a business um, or not is really not the point here. But really the point is if you sell face-to-face -to, -face to live customers, live prospects, uh, look across a kitchen table, a meeting desk, a meeting room, uh, or a physical place of business, uh, this first visit system is very much for you. Uh, some things that we've done to reinvent Gardner's Mattress and More, mainly the one thing is our dream room. Uh, this is a try before you buy uh, testing room where as part of this first visit system, if somebody chooses not to buy, um, we are able to use this as a downsell opportunity to get them uh, to come back and become our customer. It's also used as a peace of mind uh, thing when somebody's investing a larger sum of money with us. We'll use this dream room. So very nicely appointed. Looks like a nice bedroom or a hotel room. Uh, this is actually an older picture. I apologize. We actually have wood floors in there now just to give it an even more homey looking feel. Uh, but really what happens in here is we tell people, take a, take a nap, read a book, watch television. Don't do anything you don't want mom to see because it is a private room. But um, <clears throat> at the end of the day, this room closes at 100%. Our customers are invested in this purchase and this process with us, and they all buy. Um, we take a deposit when we set this appointment up, they come back and we just affirm that the bed they're choosing is the right bed for them. So this is part of the first visit system. Uh, when a yes to uh, purchasing today isn't imminent or maybe a yes is there, but not quite a resounding yes. And they want that added peace of mind to try out the bed before they invest in it. So uh, that is our dream room. We have a customer lounge. This is where when we talk about our scripting, in choreography, this is where we bring most people. We'll sit down on a comfortable uh, futon, which is not what all most people expect of a futon today. Uh, maybe they'll sit in one of our massage chairs, or they'll just sit down in our chairs or stools, and we just have a conversation uh, in this lounge away from the primary thing that they're there for, and that's uh, mattresses. So 
we have this conversation first and it really sets the tone for our sales presentation. Ultimately, all of this points to all these different wow experiences, as, as I call them, uh, points to immense uh, testimonial proof. This is one of two three-inch thick three-ring binders uh, of testimonials that we have. They're all handwritten, as you can see. Uh, you certainly can't read it from this picture, but uh, all handwritten, all undeniably authentic testimonials. And we have these categorized to need, brand, pain, reason why they shop for a bed. Uh, this way, when we're talking with somebody and they have some objections, they have some concerns, we don't have to sit there and try to validate what we do. We show them what their peers have to say about the product and the purchase from us. And we can relate that very specifically to the person in front of us with the past testimonial proof. So uh, all of this pointed to in 2014, uh, we've been able to raise revenues from that low point in 2010 uh, to 1.7 million. Uh, all indicators say this year will eclipse the $2 million number. Uh, so folks, what I'm sharing with you comes from our retail business, uh, our laboratory, if you will. Uh, I'm sharing you things that have put us on a, a tremendous growth pattern in a down economy. Uh, we've opened a second location. We have seven full-time staff. Ben and I are not in the business. We are not required to be in the business. Um, we are there typically on Mondays and Fridays. Friday is an at option day. So really, uh, we're in our stores um, once a week uh, throughout the month, uh, throughout the year, is when we're mandated to be there. Uh, in 2014, we licensed what I call our stuff, uh, our processes, our systems, what I'm sharing you here uh, with you here today to the industry. We call that automated mattress profits. Uh, in 2014, we rebranded that business and, and stuff, if you will, as Infotail, the company uh, I'm presenting uh, today and the first visit system within the Infotail world. So real quick, just to show you uh, and define what Infotail is, uh, think information-based marketing and selling first, okay? This is the Internet's transformational and informational power. Uh, think of that in relation to the people you want to do business with. They're getting information from the Internet. What we do in our business, what we do for our clients as Infotailers, what we coach and teach, uh, speaking to you as a representative of Infotail, uh, is we want you to harness and direct the power of that information and the internet through the front door of your retail store. Ultimately, it's the way you would treat your grandmother if she were to walk into your store, okay? Um, we want people educated. Uh, our numbers show it's beneficial to have your prospective customer be educated. Time and again, our clients, uh, and I won't share names for their privacy reasons, but time and again, our clients are getting uh, increased tickets and increased sales when we can show that that person originated by getting information in their hands first. Uh, upwards of 50% increases. 35% uh, is, is more typical, but we have one client where their average ticket increases by 50% when they've gotten the short educational guide or shook, as we call it, um, that we've written for them in their prospective clients' hands. Uh, it's just tremendous power. And if you think about it, it's out there in front of us. What we've done is created a process of tools, systems, and automation to make that happen for face-to-face -face businesses. You know, our goal is to ultimately have um, a business set up that is very relaxing for the business owner, gives you peace of mind, and really allows you to um, uh, kick back and relax. Now, whatever your definition of relaxing is, you know, that's up to you. For me, it's a very nice long motorcycle ride uh, through a nice green countryside. That's my definition of relaxation. Uh, I like being at the lake. I like being at the mountains. Uh, some people like being at the beach, whatever it is. Uh, this is our goal for you as infotail, infotailers. Um, hopefully what you'll learn today here in this first visit system uh, shows you some of that. Um, when we talk about why we exist as infotail, um, we're not really focused as a company on showing you all the new ways to get customers because there's a wealth of them out there. We are very much focused on showing you the way to do business with people who give you money and to properly identify them as leads, prospects, or first-time customers. 
and really the, that's where your money is. You know, if you're closing at 50%, you're still leaving 50% of your sales opportunities on the table, which is why we've come up with this first visit system that we'll dig into here in a minute. But I wanted to kind of give you the, uh, the requisite, if you will, the reason why this first visit system exists. What we find a lot of times when we talk to clients is they're closing a third of the time, leaving two thirds of the money they spent on all the things on the left of your screen, useless, uh, wasted money. And when you can recapture typically 25 to as high as 40% in, our, in our, our clients' histories as we've shown, and when you can recapture that much of opportunity from leads, prospects, and convert them to first-time customers, we contend you're, you're almost crazy to spend money on new until you have all of your systems in place to deal with all the people already coming to you. Uh, so that's how we view the world of Infotail. We're certainly adept at helping our clients write uh, good direct mail ads, create good content for Facebook, uh, develop postcards, tweak their website, things like that. It's not our focus. Our focus is in the systems of when people are in front of you, when that phone rings and when the door swings in your business. To further drive this home, most people look at a business and they're very intently focused on the front end marketing. Your focus as the business owner is very high or as maybe uh, your, your management focus is very high on front end marketing. And um, that quickly dwindles off. You know, this, this graphic represents that closing rate that you're experiencing in your business. Maybe that's a third, uh, maybe it's less, maybe it's a little more, but ultimately it, it quickly trails off and just drops off. Um, smarter businesses have a follow-up marketing uh, platform behind the front-end marketing, but uh, there ultimately is a gap, okay? What smart infotailers look like is they have the front-end marketing, but followed up and layered with it is the follow-up marketing behind it. And it just has a lot more freedom, a lot more opportunity for your business. And as I said just a minute ago, uh, Infotail starts when the door swings or the phone rings. All right. So when you prepare your new promotions, your new advertising, and you have follow up in mind and systems in mind as to what you're going to do with that lead to turn them into a prospect, to make them a customer, there's immense profit potential from that same focus of effort that you had before. It's just there's no big drop off in sales opportunity. You have a lot of long tail opportunity to continue to make money with that advertising and marketing investment that you've made. You know, ultimately, this path looks like this. It's you're targeting the right leads. You're offering that information. Uh, when you're an info tailor, you're able to collect name and email, name, email address for that information. And then you have the first visit where, where you conduct the assessment of need, which is what we're going to go over today. Uh, you then wow the customer and then make them a lifetime fan. So this profit path is what you should be striving for. Now you get there simply by having some key things in place, okay? Uh, tools, Infotail tools as we call them. These are a collection of strategic and proven information-centric tools that uh, are ultimately designed to inform and educate with quality and helpful information. So these are a good website that isn't just a big business card. It's an informational website that points to being you as an authority and resource in your marketplace. Um, so that's the kind of tools that we talk about when we talk about Infotail tools. When we talk about systems, this is a combination of Infotail tools strategically organized for a specific outcome. So this is really the first visit system that we're talking about. Um, Infotail systems are organized, reliable, and consistent, and they deliver uh, consistent and predictable results. So this is not about having every team member on your staff having a different greeting or having uh, a different uh, different way that they present a product. It's about identifying the best way to present a product, the best way to greet a customer, and doing that consistently and predictably. Automation is what allows 
uh, your tools and systems to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and 52 weeks a year. And we've perfected this technology uh, and use of a technology to allow the systems to become automated and work for you and not you for them. You know, the problem with systems that aren't automated is you're really creating, you know, a reliable, dependable to-do list is what is what's happening without the automation, without the technology of making the systems work for you. Uh, there is no uh, there is no peace of mind in the business. You just add more things for yourself to do. So let's jump into um, the first visit system. So one of the first tools of this system are scripting and choreography. And I want you to think about this. So Marlon Brando, Al Pacino, Julia Roberts, uh, Helen Mirren, Brad Pitt, all the and many other actors and actresses, they're paid ultimately for what, right? Well, that's to bring a script to life. Um, this is really to sell the movie and the performance. And now more than ever, uh, it's, it's really important because as movies have established franchises, there's, you know, two to three sequels, and then there's a prequel, and it's very important uh, that everybody delivers a quality script. Um, none of them come into the production house that morning uh, out of character, out of mindset, thinking that, oh, I'm just going to wing this thing. They don't do that, and we shouldn't approach our businesses this way. Um, we need to sell our products. We need to sell our services, and ultimately, this translates to money, just as it translates to money for uh, my actor and actress example, okay? Uh, I'll, I'll show you. I mean, nobody's above committing to scripting. Actors are paid $20 million a movie to deliver a script and win awards for it. Um, we put food on our table by what we sell. We should commit to a script so we don't have to stress out about putting food on our table. Um, so scripting is very important. So that's one of the first tools. Choreography is the second one. So scripting is what you say and the precise language and terms and definitions. But choreography is when you say it, how you respond to the answers that the prospective customer or client gives you. And then the ultimate direction that you take. So this is a little more work. This is why it's so important to understand how all your products, how all your services are being presented. Uh, because if somebody has a different response to an objection or a question, you know, maybe they're, maybe they are with that answer making sales, but it's likely they're actually killing sales with that answer, or at least, you know, keeping it neutral and not advancing any new opportunities. So choreography is very important. When you combine them together, um, it's really a win-win, uh, for both the customer because they're understanding more about their purchase. They're understanding more about the products they're buying and they're making a very educated decision. And um, for the store, for the business, you're selling more, you're adding on more, you're being more profitable. So this is something that's very, uh, very important. So we're gonna dig right in now that we understand the tools and we'll show you how we uh, align them into uh, this first visit system. So when it comes to the greeting, the, the things that I just cannot get behind and I really don't like are these pleasantries, like what brings you in? Oh, so you're shopping for a mattress. You're shopping for this thing. Uh, are you here for the big sale? Um, what can I help you with? What can I find? You know, the truth of the matter is most people don't really know the answers to these questions at all. So they give the Heisman hand, the handout, fingers stretched. I'm just looking. I'm good basically saying, leave me the heck alone. Um, and they do that because they just really don't know, you know, they know they're in a mattress store, you know, shopping for a mattress is like, you know, one of the, one of the silliest questions to ask. It's very obvious that that's what they're doing. We have, a, we have something that we say um, that works a lot better. And I'll share with you here in a minute, but these pleasantries, you know, it's not that we, I'm instructing you to not be nice and to be abrupt and very pointed and focused. I'm saying, let's have our words matter, just like in a script, right? Every word matters. And uh, these words are very important. So these kinds of things just aren't, don't cut it for us as, uh, as Infotail and, and certainly shouldn't, uh, if you're using them now, I would challenge you to change that with what I'm going to show you next. 
So the Infotail greeting is this. Welcome to our store. You know, it, it, from my perspective, retail mattress store that I have, welcome to our store. Tell me why are you shopping for a mattress today? That tell me phrase is very powerful. Tell me can't be answered with, I'm just looking. I'm only shopping around. I'm just gathering preliminary info. You know, I'm here on my lunch break. Uh, I got to get my husband or my spouse in here. Uh, it can't be answered with, well, I'm checking prices. The brain has to answer, tell me with the truth. What's logical? What The reason that they're actually in the store. That simple phrase, tell me, is very important. Uh, and it's really a phrase that you can use anytime that you have a question or an answer given to you by a prospective customer. Very powerful little phrase that works uh, wonders to get uh, ultimately the, the goal, the truth of what your your customers are looking to do with you, you and your business. So for us, that tell me is a, is a redirect. Uh, it sets the tone, and it's a differentiation point. Okay, because every other every other place of business is simply going to be using those typical pleasantries, you know, haha, you're here for the big sale? Well, no, I wasn't. I was actually looking to cure my back problem and willing to pay any price for it. But gee whiz, since you told me I could save money, let me look at that. That's what happens when you're not focused on your language, right? So uh, this is the way that we view using the greeting. So here's how we re redirect this. So let's let's work this back hypothetically. So welcome, I'm Jeff. Tell me why you're shopping for a mattress today. And the person would say, well, you know what, I got this back pain, I've had it for a while, I woke up this morning and, you know, this is it, I just can't take it, I have to address this head on. Okay, so we know that back pain is the big motivator, we know they've been suffering it for a little while. I could choose to say, you know what, tell me, uh, tell me how long you've had, you've had back pain, tell me what caused it. You know, and right there we're starting a conversation. They've given me permission to ask those questions because they've shared that information. And I can use uh, those subsequent answers uh, to better present products that are a solution to their need. So specifically, I'm excited to help you with your back pain and ultimately that's my goal. But before we begin, and I wanna fully assess if we're a fit for each other, I'd like to have a conversation about your needs over and above the back pain because hopefully a new mattress can fix that or at least alleviate some of it. This is gonna help me best fit your needs to our solutions. Are you open to joining me in our lounge? And I would normally point to our customer lounge. Now, who's not going to take us up on that, right? We've personalized our greeting while scripted. We've personalized it to them, so let's look at it. So the things in red are, are, are really what we're going to focus on. Sorry, well, I got a drink of <clears throat> drink of water there. So, uh, excited to help you with your back pain. So that's the answer they gave us from tell me why you're shopping for a mattress. Um, very easy. They told us, we asked, they told us, we got it, and we use it. Uh, before we begin, and so I can fully assess if we're a fit for each other. So I'm not trying to sell you anything yet. Not at all. I, I've, in fact, at times told people when they've come in, you know, somewhat adversarial, somewhat in a grouchy mood, they've answered the tell me questions, but they're still grouchy because they know I'm the big evil salesperson, right? Uh, I just say, listen, so I can fully assess if we're a fit for each other. I don't know. I don't know if, if you're going to spend your money here yet or not. That's not my goal right now. My goal is to see if we're a fit. So very important little part of this script. Um, going on, I'd like to have a conversation about your needs beyond the back pain you have, because our goal is to help you alleviate that. But once we alleviate that, maybe we find that you can now lay on your side, but now the bed's not comfortable that way. Or maybe we can help you with your back pain, but your spouse finds the mattress really uncomfortable. So we have to have this conversation. This is ultimately going to help me best fit your needs to our solutions. Then you wrap up. Are you open 
to joining me in our lounge. And again, are you open to is just simply a question of, are you willing to go on this journey with me? Are you willing to explore this? We're not really asking for a final resolution. Are you going to buy it? Right? That's a big, scary question. I don't know yet. I don't know if I have all the things. Maybe I thought I had all the answers, but you said a few things that maybe have more questions. It's not that at all. Are you open to joining me in our lounge is just simply saying, are you willing to have this conversation? That's all we're, that's all we're asking for at this point in time. We're not asking for this final uh, decision on get your wallet out, give me your money. It's not what we're going for. So that's how we break down uh, the greeting in total. Um, when we go through this, sitting down in that lounge, we'll complete the assessment, which I'm going to get to here in a minute. Um, but the conversation and all your conversations, all your sales conversations can work within these modalities, okay? So tell me. Tell me why you're shopping for a mattress. Oh, my back hurts. Okay, tell me how long's your back hurt? Oh, geez, I've been dealing with this for three years. Oh, really? Wow, that really stinks. Tell me, how'd, how'd that happen? How'd you hurt your back? Ah, I was in a car accident. Okay. Everybody okay? Yeah, yeah, everybody's fine. See see how tell me works? You just, you take it from this head-to-head, -head sales pressure-filled environment to a conversation. You're getting people to tell you about themselves. And the more, we all know this, the more we can get our customers, our prospective customers to talk to us about themselves, the more comfortable they're gonna be. And the more connective we can be to see if we truly are a fit. Let's face it, we're not a fit 100% of the time. If you have the thing in your business where you're a fit 100% of the time, you're in the wrong business. You need to be in the business of teaching how to do that. Um, Myself, I don't quite have that. We have a very high close rate as an overall company of about 81%. But, you know, we are still not ourselves perfect. And we're constantly tweaking these things, which is what I'm bringing you here in this first visit system. This is not generation one that I'm sharing with you. This is like generation 10. All right. So tell me is, is one of the first things you ask. You'll say that's not a problem. You know, so that could be used where somebody says, you know, yeah, I, I just need to find something at the cheapest price. I hear that's just the best way to buy a bed. All right. You know what? That's not a problem. We hear that a lot of times. Would you be open, though, to having a conversation about your sleep needs? And maybe price is the only thing that you would like to focus on. But maybe we'll help uncover some things that, that are as important as the budget. Would you be open to that conversation? So using that's not a problem with would you be open is uh, – is a really powerful like two-step piece of uh, sales scripting and choreography. Then you can always go back to tell me with those answers you get uh, when it's time for a decision. All right. Um, <clears throat> if it's not, and I am not at all about not selling. Uh, it's actually quite the contrary. Um, I am very much about selling. And when the time is right and I feel we're in a good groove with our customers and that we're a right fit, we've got the solution for them, they really like it, they vocalize as much, I am not afraid to ask, would you like to get this? When can we deliver this to you? We have this in stock. Not afraid of that at all. But if I have an inkling that, you know, maybe I feel this is a right fit, but they're not yet convinced, I'm going to ask, where do we go from here? Or what are your next steps? Where do we go from here is typically when I have the couple, both both decision makers in front of me. And what are your next steps is, is what I'll ask when it's uh, when I've been told there's a spouse or sleeping partner uh, involved in the decision process. Those answers from there allow me to now ask some more questions. So tell me, what do you think your spouse might ask? Uh, what concerns would they have about this mattress? You know, I could possibly provide those answers for you now. Uh, where do we go from here? They might ask, well, do you deliver? Oh, I'm so sorry. Um, of course we do. Uh, we do deliver. My apologies. I, I must not have made that clear. But if we're not asking those things, if we're not asking these questions, uh, they may very well have wanted to buy. We just didn't get to that point where they could make that decision. So 
where do we go from here and what are your next steps are another favorite that I like to use um, in the in the choreography of how we deliver the script all right so when we go into the lounge right so you're open to joining me in the lounge great let's have this conversation how do we actually determine if we're a fit well we go into our client assessment and really this sets the tone in the direction of your sales presentation it's truly the ultimate script and what this does is it covers all the bases it covers the bases of your mattress sale your bed base sale your pillows your sheets your protector your frame and any possible delivery problems as well and I'll show you what I mean by that in a minute but um, this client assessment really was born uh, I'm a big marketing uh, student I study a lot of different marketing a lot of different companies that are successful um, and I and I really was inspired to develop this assessment from actually the insurance business and uh, specifically selling annuities and life insurance in the direct selling model where people come to your home and sit down at your kitchen table they have an assessment uh, they have a scripted and choreographed process down to who sits in what chair and you know if if the father figure or father you know male person of the household sits at the head where do you sit in relation to the wife when she sits at the left or the right it gets that granular because they've studied this so these assessments and this scripting and choreography has been has been born out of studying very successful businesses that ultimately have a product or service to sell okay so the assessment uh, I've copied hours from the store uh, in here and I'll just kind of go through these questions and share with you why we ask them and how we ultimately take them back to uh, to furthering the sale forward so we start out with the usual suspects how long have you had your mattress um, you know this is going to tell us some things if it's one to five years typically they're going to be replacing something that's let them down something they're having a problem with even in six to ten years that could be the problem typically we will find there that they were just never comfortable with it but there was no recourse no opportunity to correct it so they just lived with it uh, 11 to 15 will typically find that uh, you know they are um, time to replace it and maybe experiencing some specific aches and pains and then there's just people who've had it so long that they they just don't remember um, we ask what size are you sleeping on presently and then we ask do you feel that's enough room you know often I'll say tell me is that enough room for you have you slept maybe in a hotel where you had a king-size bed and uh, really enjoyed that and we, we ask that question because as salespeople on the floor we have a lot more influence over this than we allow ourselves or maybe that we've thought um, you know uh, so we ask that question followed up with what type of headboard footboard do you have now and do you want to keep it so maybe they have room for a king but they have an heirloom piece of furniture that they just don't want to get rid of um, you know we've had people where we get into that question and they really want a king they don't want to get rid of the furniture and we ask well do you have a guest bedroom are you open to there's that word again or phrase are you open are you open to moving the headboard and footboard into a guest bedroom and maybe we could uh, coordinate the existing furniture with a, a new headboard this way you don't have to get rid of anything but ultimately when you're in bed for eight hours a day and your eyes are closed you don't see the furniture anyway wouldn't you rather sleep in a bed where you have as much room as possible so we have a lot more influence over that part of the purchase than I think a lot of uh, people working a sales floor think uh, what type of headboard footboard do you have now uh, I'm sorry we went over that um, you ever we ask if you ever have problems getting in or out of bed due to the mattress being too tall or too short okay there's one of those ways we're curing delivery problems you know we, we didn't understand they needed a low profile box spring we didn't understand that the bed was too tall so anything we put on it is going to be uh, equally you know add to the height of getting in and out so we, be, we begin to understand what's in the home without really having to have them go back and measure because we've had a conversation about it if we get all the way to the end and we don't understand this the chances of closing that sale are going to diminish the further you go without having the answers here we ask if they read in bed or watch television 
Uh, if not, do they use a laptop, tablet, cell phone in bed? Do they do work in bed? If so, how do you position yourself? Uh, we ask, what position do you sleep in? And then followed up with, is this a choice or a necessity? So this is where we don't, thus far, we haven't really asked if they have any specific aches or pains because typically we always get no if we ask that direct question. But if you ask what position do you sleep in and then follow it up with if this is a choice or a necessity, often they'll say, well, I have to because, you know, I tore my rotator cuff on my right shoulder, so I sleep on my left side. Or, you know, I have to sleep on my back because if I sleep anywhere else, my, my lower back really hurts. So that's how we get to that, that question and get a better answer. Uh, how many pillows do you sleep with presently? Do you prefer something that's firm or soft? And we really relate that to um, how they use it. Do you, do you hug it? Do you manipulate it under your head? Do you squish it, bend it? Do you just lay your head down? Uh, that's kind of how we relate that question. And then we ask how old their current pillows are. Um, and again, this is now allowing us to talk about an overall system, not at all the way at the end where it appears as a money grab that we're just adding on. All right. Continuing on, uh, this is the remainder of our questions. Do you suffer from allergies? So here, if we get a yes answer to this, we can talk about mattresses that are, you know, more uh, uh, conducive to reducing allergens in the bed, such as a latex mattress. Um, if they have a lot of allergy problems, sinus problems, stuffiness, we could talk about how an adjustable bed base helps with that. We can talk about how a mattress protector keeps the bed clean and sanitary and healthy while they're using it. If they use it faithfully, their mattress can look uh, just as new as it was on the sales floor uh, and the day they got it. We asked them if there's ever small children in the bed. So younger families with smaller kids, um, you know, hopefully there'd never be an accident in the bed. But that, you know, if, if that's their lifestyle where little Johnny or Susie get into the bed often and they want to keep the bed clean and sanitary, again, a mattress protector is very important. Pets, there's more pets in the beds today than ever before. Um, very, very easy to offer a premium and quality protector to somebody uh, that's a benefit to them. That's going to keep their bed clean, keep it healthy, not get a bunch of stuff in it that adds to allergies, that adds to dust, uh, dust might build up within the bed. Uh, remember, this is where we're putting our head and putting our bodies at the end of the day. What's in our bed, our bodies are ingesting in in one way or another. Um, do they have any aches or pains? So now we'll ask that question. I'll say, tell me, any aches or pains in addition to what you shared with me about how you go to sleep? So is there anything more bothering you than your shoulder or than your back or than your knees? You know, what keeps you awake? What wakes you up in the middle of the night? What do you wake up most commonly from? Uh, if you wake up with pain in the morning, what's that like? Um, we'll ask those questions. Again, all of this is pointing back to getting more from the customer so they tell us more about themselves. We'll ask if anybody snores. Again, uh, for us, that positions the ability to offer and present a bed base uh, for those solutions. Uh, sleeping hot or cold. Uh, any issues with damp sheets in the morning, i.e. perspiration. So here, the choreography is all of our staff, myself, uh, everybody, we always say, you know, we all have our hand behind our back and we kind of rub the low of our back and say, when you wake up, any, does your T-shirt or your sheets ever feel damp in that area? Uh, if so, that's, you know, the temperature in the bed's a little too warm and it's likely causing you to lose a, a certain quality of sleep throughout the night. Um, so hot or cold, and again, we can talk about now, we can talk about there's an amazing, amazing new, new innovations in, in sheets, in pillows, and protectors that can really add to a temperature neutral sleep environment. Um, we offer a lot of those products. I suggest you offer those products as well. Customers are seeking them out. They're out there, and they're going to buy them from somebody. They're going to find the problem. I'm sorry, they're going to find the answer to their problem. They'll get the solution. It may as well be from us. Uh, we ask any, you know, if they get any pins and needles sensation while sleeping. Do they wake up with pain? So you can see here we've gone at the pain question in three different ways. Because, again, this is about a conversation. While we've gotten to know our customers better than I feel most of our competition has, um, we're just going at it in a different way, and we're getting deeper with each question. And then 
these last three are the ones that I like the most because it really kind of puts a bow on our conversation and affirms to me the direction that I'm going to take. So we ask, when was the last time you slept so well that you felt like you didn't move all night long? And depending on that response, um, we're going to know if what they've told us before is truthful or not. We're going to know if they've ever experienced that. We're going to know how well they're actually sleeping. Um, then we ask, how long do you expect your new mattress to be comfortable and deliver proper support? So this is where we're going to be able to uh, get in our mind what makes sense to present. We don't want to ultimately blow, blow them out of the water budget-wise and just show them something that turns them off completely. But we do want to show them a quality sleep system. And then ultimately, if you could take one home tonight, what's tomorrow morning feel like? In a perfect world, what do you feel like in the morning? What time are you getting out of bed? How, how are you greeting your, your spouse, your partner, your kids? What's the morning on the way to work feel like? How's that feel? How is it different now than it was yesterday? And those questions elicit a tremendous amount of emotional response and really allow us to show something that we can connect to that emotion. Okay, so that's the questions of our assessment. And I kind of walked you through uh, the choreography. Um, I'll show you what we do to kind of wrap this up. So naturally, we'll take all those answers and we'll run through our process of showing our product. And I'm not going to get into that here because, frankly, for everybody on, it's a different you know, it's a different process of showcasing your products. Some people only have Innerspring. Some people have Innerspring and memory foam. Some people have all different sleep, sleep surfaces to offer. So I'll let your process determine it. But hopefully you gathered some great new discussion points and conversation points to better help you navigate all the options you have. Because, you know, it's, it's as confusing and difficult as it is for us to recommend something. It's even more so for our customer. So when we have these answers, we may as well um, have the most information we can before we start presenting products. So we go through present the product. My hope is that what you've learned here today, you can close some more. But in the event you don't, here's how we wrap it up. And this furthers um, part of who we are as Infotail and what we recommend our clients to do. So this is what we call our summary sheet. So this is when we get to the end, if we haven't closed the sale, typically what most people say is, well, do you have a business card? Can you write down a price? We say, sure, we can. We actually call that a summary sheet. Would you like us to do that for you? And almost always it's yes. So we have, you can see four rows here, but really it, we only ever write down two. Uh, if it's more than four, we feel we really haven't done our job. Um, so we have two two specific things that we'll write down, and we'll typically break that out, whether it's an adjustable option or not. And we'll relate uh, support, comfort, environment, which is temperature, and motion transfer. And we'll score them. And, and again, if people truly want to compare, and we, and we believe the things our customers tell us, we know sometimes they're not truthful, but after all this conversation together, we, we've, had, we've made a connection. So we'll take them at their word. If they want to compare, we want to give them the tools to compare. So we're going to we're going to give them the things they should be focused on in their purchase around the support, the comfort, the environment, the transfer of motion uh, and the investment. And we'll, we'll just give it a good, better, best. Um, they can always come back and reevaluate, but we want to give them a working tool to go home with to consider their purchase. So this is the top of our summary sheet at the bottom is the rest of this where we have suggested pillows. So we'll write the pillow who it's for, Mary or Bob, which kind of pillow it was. We'll write that down, the one they enjoyed. If there's any kind of savings event going on, we'll fill that in. Um, any other notes that might be? So, you know, maybe, um, maybe there's something involved with the delivery where we need to charge a little more. Uh, maybe we're going to um, move, in my example, move the one bed to the guest room and bring the new headboard uh, with that king size bed. We might write something like that down. Um, but here's the, here's the part, the magic part of this summary sheet uh, at the bottom. 
So after we've had a great conversation about their needs, we've determined we're a fit. We're just not quite sure that we're a fit today, but they feel we're a good place to consider, a very strong place to consider. We'll write down and ask for their full contact information. Now at the bottom of this is also their phone number uh, that we get. It just got cut off, but we'll ask for this information and I will tell you, you go through this process of having a scripted choreographed sales presentation that is value added for the customer, helps them learn some things about their purchase. While you are presenting your products for the value that they are, you will get this information, something, be it email, address, or phone, you will get something eight to nine times out of 10. Our business, we're finding about 85% of our summary sheets, we're getting everything because we ask for it. And because we tell people, well, you wanna think about this, there's a lot that we covered. We can send you some things in summation past our summary sheet. We can also send you some things about sales events. We can send you other information that maybe we just didn't cover that we have and we can email that out to you. We may give you a phone call to invite you back if there's an event. We may give you a call to invite you back because something new came to the floor that we feel is a fit. And we're gonna send you a thank you card in the mail just for coming in. So sometimes we'll share why we collect all that, but very rarely are we asked why we're asking for their information. Um, my wife is somebody who, who very much feels that uh, if somebody asks for this information and they don't follow up, that they're just not interested in her business. Uh, and I would agree. People want to know you want to earn their business. And this is a great way to show them that. Now, here's the thing. What you do with this information is your next step. Okay. Uh, in the world of Infotail, plugging this system into the automation, when you were to enter this information, into a form that we give our clients that they use. All those emails that I highlighted about events and follow-up and additional information are sent automatically. Uh, they're personalized to the brand, to the product industries. They're even personalized to the pain that they might have. So we might send emails that are specific to back pain, whereas we could send emails that are specific to acid reflux when somebody's looking at a bed-based purchase. So we can very much personalize these emails and make them very relevant and timely, all right? So for you, that's not the point of this training. For you, the point of this training was to show you scripting a choreography, putting it through a focused conversation uh, on an assessment, and having this tool to use to ultimately elicit a yes and increase your, and increase your closing percentage. And when you don't, have a tool that allows you to collect their name and email and, and phone number and address whatever piece of information you can use, and then commit to the follow-up and make more sales by following up. All right, so um, some other tips on, a, on an assessment on how to set them up. You know, think of should ask questions. Think of the questions you want people to be asking, okay? Not the frequently asked ones like, you know, when's the sale end? Can I get it, how soon can I get it on delivery? You know, what size is a queen versus a king? All right, that's stuff that's readily available. Uh, if you need more help with this, think of your best customer satisfaction stories. Look over testimonials and reviews that you might have on your website or on your social media pages. Um, that will elicit some discussion points. Think of your worst customer stories. Now, maybe that was something you did, maybe it was something the customer did, it really doesn't matter. Think about those questions that arose that were unanswered that related to a bad experience. And how did those, how did both these scenarios transpire? What got you from start to finish? What elicited that positive or negative outcome? And can we relate that into your own assessment and, and build your own tool to have a conversation to point to more sales? You know, remind them of the ideal scenario. Paint that picture your customer's trying to achieve, okay? I've got some furniture store folks that are on here. You can replace the word mattress with furniture. Um, it doesn't really matter. If somebody's looking for uh, sanctuary in the bedroom, you can show them that. If they're looking for fashion, you can show them that. Um, paint that picture, paint that ideal scenario with the conversation that you're conducting. 
for the furniture folks, you know, another way to think about this is how the room's actually going to be used. All right. Um, is it Grand Central Station? Is it uh, a kitchen, dining, and homework room? You know, is a living room where you do the gadgets, where you read and you write maybe? Is it entertainment? Is it a focal point? Is it, you know, your home office? Okay. So th these questions um, are very important to ask and get answers to because they leave – no, nothing else is left to question now for the customer. They can actually say yes when you say or when you ask, would you like to buy it? Okay, so when you have all of these questions, when you have this conversation laid out, you've actually armed and given permission for your prospective client and customer to say yes. All right. Uh, one last thought is that the number one goal of the business owner uh, in order to succeed today is to curate as many exceptional and memorable experiences as possible. And the first visit system, when that's the goal of almost every brick and mortar face-to-face -face business, is to get a live body, a live person in the door. Um, this first visit system is everything. This is an exceptional experience. It's going to be one that's memorable. It just depends on you whether it's favorable or negative. And this, this is a goal that you need to have and fulfill in your business to create a scripted and choreographed first visit system. So that is essentially what I have to share with you today. Uh, I'll wrap up and say that we do offer our services to clients. Um, if uh, about anything and everything that we've talked about today, I will share with you one client. Um, who we created uh, scripting and choreography for first, and then they actually became uh, an Infotail client uh, second. But um, so uh, Infotail are experts in developing engaging client assessments that accomplish a number of goals for us retailers. Uh, first, we know that our staff are engaging customers in a way that's first beneficial to the customer while presenting our best goods and upgrades in a way that's respectful and not pushy and well received by our customers. Second, we know that every customer in the door is being given the same precise sales presentation that leaves no revenue opportunity on the table. And third, uh, a scripted and choreographed assessment has actually improved our closing rate greatly, in fact, doubling it, and has allowed us to better train our new hires. Uh, best of all, we can rest easy when we're off the floor. Uh, so these are two brothers that own this location. And when they're out of the business, knowing we have a tool that's replicated our best salespeople, who's, who's them, us, uh, the two brothers. We highly recommend Infotail and any product or service you may be, you may consider investing in. So that's what Rick and Steve had to say. They're great clients, and uh, we love what they're doing in their business. But um, if any of this is of interest to you, uh, beyond this, your next steps, um, we make it very simple. There's a free strategy session that I offer. This is a complimentary fact-finding, uh, no-obligation strategy session, and uh, we'll uncover follow-up tasks and profit opportunities in the business. Um, I bill my personal consulting time at um, $500 an hour. That's just a, on average number that I use. Um, so this is a half-hour session. And it's a $250 value, and you can take advantage of that. Uh, by visiting infotail.com forward slash request call. So that is the first visit system presentation. Uh, I thank you very much for joining me. I would love to hear your feedback on, on what you've learned here today. I hope that you could, um, you should have been able to, to take some notes and, and hopefully this afternoon maybe uh, try out that tell me script. Uh, tell me why you're shopping for a mattress. Easiest thing to implement. Uh, would you be open? Would you be open to, you know what, if you don't have your assessment yet, and, I, and I'd be shocked if anybody did in the hour we spent together, but um, <clears throat> tell me why you're shopping for a mattress. Would you be open to exploring a new product that's on our floor or a product that I love that, you know, a lot of my customers seem to like? Tell me, would you be open and where do we go from here? Use those three things today if you can. And I am sure you'll see a positive result with it. So thank you for tuning in. If you're interested at all in discussing with me uh, in detail anything you've heard on this presentation or anything you see on our website, uh, feel free to um, email me, jeff at infotail.com. Or if you want to set up a strategy session call, uh, email, I'm sorry, go to our website, 
infotail.com forward slash request call. Thank you, everybody, and have a great day.